Woo, indeed. Hello, world. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. This past summer, tears were undoubtedly shed as after five heartfelt seasons, the Fosters took their final bow. But worry not, because Callie and Mariana are back, and we get to tag along as they navigate the all-too-difficult process of adulting. Uh, good trouble is a damn good show. So naturally, I'm pretty excited because here to tell us all about it, executive producers and stars of Good Trouble, folks, the great Maya Mitchell and Sierra Ramirez, they're in the building. Are you excited? How about that? Come on, come on. I can't wait. We're gonna bring them out in just a second, but before we do, I believe we have a trailer for the show, so let's go ahead and run that clip. I'm gonna shout it from the rooftop. Welcome to your new home. She's a beauty. I can't believe you moved us into a commune. I did not move us into a commune. Exactly. What the f break out? You gotta stop letting people take advantage of you. You're supposed to be adults. I could do so much more. Dirty mom's a terrible thing to waste. You guys are gonna join? Yeah, we'd love to. We're Adams Fosters. We don't give up. And we're not alone. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, make a ridiculous amount of noise. My Mitchell Sierra Mirrors right here. Let's do it. Hi. Uh, I was just, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much Thank for being you. here. We're uh, excited. Thank you for having us. We are so excited you're here. I was just telling you backstage that uh, I love this show and you guys have done an amazing job. It's not just a good show. It's hard to make a good show, period. But it's also really hard when you're coming from the legacy of another show to kind of find your own voice. You guys have nailed that. Uh, you're knocking it out of the park. You're killing it. I'm not the only one who thinks that. It's all Thank over the you. place. So congratulations. That's Thank wonderful so thing. Yeah. yeah, we love our show, so we're glad yeah. that other people do. <laughs> absolutely. It makes it all worth it. It's always nice when that works out, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so how are you guys doing? How's life right now? Did I see you were just on uh, Seth Meyers? You just do that? Yeah, we That's did Seth fun. Meyers. I I finished work in LA at like two a.m. the night before, and then yeah, did hopped right on a flight and wow. managed to sort of string a sentence together. So, <laughs> but I had this one. So, yeah, you guys are a pretty good team, uh, right? Yeah. We like each yeah. other. Yeah. She's okay, she's cool or whatever. She's fine. She's fine. <laughs> Um, let's, let's go back for a second before we dive into to what's going on right now. You know, five seasons, uh, over a hundred episodes. Uh, I was trying to do the math and figure out the timeline. What, what was the overlap for you guys when you knew that Foster's was coming to a close, but Good Trouble was going to happen? Like what, how much, was there overlap? Was it one than the other? Yeah. It was very vague because I was kind of asked about it hypothetically by one of our showrunners, like, Mid, like towards the end a of bit season before five. the series, like the three part series finale. Yeah, and we thought we had, we thought we had like a season six, a season six, seven. Like, w yeah, we were, yeah, we we were too confident. <laughs> yeah, and so, um, yeah, we were kind of. I was blindsided by it completely, but we, I'd been approached about, you know, would you ever do a spin off? with Sierra and I was like well yeah of course she's my best friend and like my favorite person so but like we have season six so like what are you talking exactly. about yeah yeah and then we found out about the cancellation and I was like ah and then we started to get into talks and negotiations and um and worked it out but it's I mean it's been great yeah, yeah. I mean, it's obviously, it, I think it's sad no matter what when you work on something for that long and you have right. to say. Right, it was very bittersweet. It was very, exactly, bittersweet is tough. the exact word. Yeah. yeah, we kind of had to compartmentalize it a little bit and just like, we knew we had this show coming up, but we just wanted to really give our soak energy it up. to the Fosters and honor that. And, yeah, um, sure. and I'm glad we got that three-part finale to give the fans that kind of closure. Cool. We were really lucky to have that. So I feel like we had the best chance at making that um, kind of transition more seamless. For sure. And it's also, it's not like, 
yes, it's it's a totally different universe. It's a different world, but it's not goodbye, goodbye, because there are plenty of awesome guest stars and people pop in. I there saw are. I yeah, saw Noah cool. was teased, which is that also he's coming in. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. Like I mean, I mean, because I genuinely am a fan of the show as well. So to see where these characters are, just kind of in the, like a little further into their lives, it's yeah, that's awesome. gotta be wild. Elaborate on that, right? Because you guys, you've grown up uh, with your characters, and now you're watching them uh, continue to grow and evolve. But you also get to see how every other character's grown and evolved. That's got to be very exciting. What was that like as that started to happen, as these people have come in, you get to see all these stories and stuff? Yeah, it's so exciting. And then we'd like read the scripts and read the outlines and be like, oh, that's what Brandon's doing? Yeah. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? It, it is all like very ex exciting. And, you know, we, we grew up on the show as well. So, you know, to kind of grow up with, along with it. And I think the audience it has as well. So, yeah, it's really exciting to kind of take on adulthood. Yeah. Together. We're all in it together. <laughs> we are all in this together. Yes. Um, I, I can't, I, I saw uh, some screeners, so I'm, not, I'm trying to remember what has aired, what hasn't aired, but I know that was definitely teased, at least that uh, Noah Centineo's dropping in with his character as well. Yeah. Uh, he's the best, isn't he? We had him here over the summer for his films and stuff. What was it like? Yeah. How was that reuniting? Because it hasn't been that long, but it's got to be fun to bring everybody back uh, one at a time and stuff. Yeah, most definitely. It's been so good. I mean, you see all of the main family members, they all have an episode, so. So, um, I mean, they all just, like, fit into the crew. You know, it's the same crew from the Fosters, so it was just, like, no like time home. had passed. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. yeah. One of the things uh, that makes this show so great, especially if you're a Fosters fan, is not just the... Um, the, 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 I don't want to say cameos, but the guest star appearances, but also uh, this show does a fantastic job of taking that point of view and the message and the heart of the Fosters, but putting it through this lens, this really fun lens of two young girls, two young women, uh, uh, and sort of discovering their early 20s and figuring things out. As executive producers, which is very exciting, were you guys involved at all in the conversations of like figuring out what that tone would be early on and deciding yeah. like how adult it would be? We were. We. I mean, I definitely sat in, um, and I remember. I mean, because our showrunners are, you know, they they really essentially wrote a lot of their, you know, life imitates art, and a lot of their stories were on the Fosters. So they sat us down. They were like, "Look, we're not." in our 20, early 20s anymore. So we, and and you you two girls have taken on LA <laughs> together. Like yeah. we need to know what kind of trouble y'all got into. It's time to write about you. So yeah. we had a very <laughs> honest, open conversation yes. with them. They learned a lot about us. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it kind of, that was like the spring point yeah. for, yeah. After you guys had that conversation and they've had time, the showrunners have had time to process it and sort of filter it through whatever channels and write about it, have you then found yourselves on the other side ready to perform your onset and you're like, or you're reading your script and you get it the couple of days or nights before or however and you go, oh wow, that's that's what we told them or like that's, we influenced oh, yeah. or this like moment. we just had that oh, conversation. Yeah. Really? <laughs> well, because well, Sierra and I are so similar to our characters or th at least the dynamic between us, it's yeah. very similar and I think that's a mixture of just us, you know, spending so much time together and the writers seeing that but also we just are so um there's definitely like conversations that Callie and Mariana have that I'm like they definitely overheard us talking last month <laughs> about that one thing <laughs> Yeah. Definitely. That's pretty amazing. What has, because uh, I was doing my research and I saw on IMDb, this is your first time as executive producers. Talk to me a little bit about that experience, about having responsibilities behind the camera as well as in front of it and what that's been like, sort of juggling that and, and learning that. Yeah. Well, our showrunners are great. Like um, the cast in general on The Fosters, we were all very curious. Um, we were all kind of being groomed to direct. Um, and so, yeah, we were all quite involved in... Um, just like behind the camera stuff, like yeah, like on like whenever I wasn't filming, I was just always in Video Village, just kind of like picking their brains or just like yeah. kind of like overhearing conversations whenever I could. Just yeah, I, honestly, like I they all really knew I was really interested in going to film school, but I, honestly, that was the best kind of schooling was just really watching them mm -hmm. work and navigate their way on set. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when it. You know, it was also, yeah, very important to us and super important to us that we'd be involved, especially because they were going, we were going to be telling stories that were relevant to us and our lives and we wanted to have that input and they were on board for that as well. Um, the network was excited and so it was just and sort of a no-brainer. But yeah, and it's we, been we've great. We've learned so much too as well. Yeah, yes. and to be able to learn, you know, with people that um, you've worked with for forever, who you trust, who know you, like it's a really safe environment. Um, we can mess up and... 
you know, run late to meetings. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> they give you a little bit of slack. They, yeah. they cut you some slack there. <laughs> have you, ha has it been, because like when you're on the Fosters, you, were guys, you guys were stars of the Fosters as well, and this is an ensemble show, but you're also the only two on the poster, right? So obviously you're working a little more. You're in almost every shot, if not together, one or the other. Has it been harder on this show to find time to like sneak over to Video Village and like sort of get, get involved in the behind the scenes stuff now, because you guys have got to be in front of camera so much on this show. It has a little bit, yeah. yeah. And it's finding that balance. We were a lot more, I guess, involved like at the beginning when we weren't like filming constantly, which was so much fun for me because I got to sit in a bunch of meetings and, um, but yeah, whenever we can, we try. And, and obviously, I think just genuinely, we have so much fun on set that there are times that whenever I'm off or whenever I'm finally done filming, I still just want to hang. Yeah. So that's when I find the time to like. Yeah. Really. And I, I have FOMO when you're doing your work stuff. Um. So I'll like, I like, hey, I'm in the area. I'm gonna come by, but like, I wasn't in downtown LA. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys ever, I, and I can't imagine you've ever disagreed on anything, but uh, as you no, were, we oh, disagree. okay. So let's go there, because you guys are such great friends and such good partners when you're working professionally. If there is something you don't agree on, does, does having that relationship and having that base, does that work to your benefit? Does it make it harder to, to navigate that conflict? Like, how does that dynamic play out? It makes it easier. makes it way easier, because we can't stay mad at each other. No. Um... Yeah. Some of my favorite scenes filming with you are like when we're just like screaming at each other. Yeah. Actually. Like, because you just know that we'll hug it out after. It's the best. Because I can, yeah, it's just. Yeah. But Sierra and I are so different. Yeah. Um, but I think that's why this works is because we bring two totally different you know, viewpoints to the table. And um, you, you, you boil my water and I put your fire out. Ah. Oh. She's a fire you, sign. I'm a water you sign. Just, did that you just coin that? Yeah, is that? Maybe. I think this is why something. I love you. See, she's a genius. Thank Girl, you. I, I, for one, love the idea of watching a scene where you two are really going at each other because you do have your conflicts in here and knowing that behind the scenes it was motivated by the idea of a big hug afterwards. It's like, that's really sweet. I think that's, that's sorry, the, beauty, sorry, sorry. the beauty of like family and a sister, you know? It's like you can say whatever you want to someone, but then like afterwards you're like, all right, do you want to go watch a movie? Yeah, see, I don't have a sister. You do, but I'm like, you know, living vicariously through that. Point, yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I was really curious about, because um, you have a unique uh, sort of perspective and a unique uh, experience as actors, because you're you're playing these characters for a number of years, but this is definitely there's a there's a shift in the tone. There's a, a year. There's a time jump. There's all these things that change. So I'm wondering, going into this show, uh, how you would prepare or what you would do research, if any, on. I imagine, uh, not the character, you're familiar with that, but what about like their careers, right? Because you're going into like being a clerk and being a programmer. Like, did you guys look into those worlds to see like, what's it really like for women in tech? And like, how does partisan politics affect law right now? Like, you guys get into that and figure those worlds out? Yeah, of course we had to. She did it all. Yeah, she had to do a lot more. Ooh. Her like, well, her legal jargon is insane. Mm. I mean, this, you know, <laughs> engineering is, is pretty crazy too, but. Yeah, my, my best friend from home, her dad, is a lawyer. So I okay. have him. So I'll make like a panicked call the night before when I get a script. I'm like, what does this whole page mean? <laughs> um, yeah, so, but definitely like the, the politics of it, you have to stay, you know, in the know and we have to stay current with that because um, our show is so topical and so timely. So, so yeah, it's, but it's been fun. Like, that's why we wanted to do this show. We wanted to do something that would challenge us and that would, you know, push us. And, um, you know, it's been, it's been incredible. We both yeah. learned so much. Yeah. What kind of research did you do for well, the whole? For, for Mariana, I mean, it, it was super exciting because, I mean, I, you kind of saw her coding and engineering start as a hobby in high school. Um, and through that, I've learned a lot. I've gotten to meet a lot of women in tech and, um, you know, it's it's a hard it's a hard business, and um, I honestly, I think every woman woman can can really relate. Yeah. I mean, it's it's hard to find your place in, in a, a setting that's mainly made up of males, and especially being a person of color. So, you know, it is it is a very hard industry, but you know, again, it's really exciting to challenge it and kind of break that barrier and really kind of make a voice for yourself. And I think that's what this show's all about is like leaving your mark and really just stirring up some good trouble. 
Yeah, there's a great moment. I can't remember what episode it is. Uh, it's not a spoiler or anything, but it's at Mariana's job, and the dude who's like always nice, but like not when it matters, and she totally calls him out on it, and yeah. she's like, just because you're nice behind their back doesn't make you doesn't a superhero. Nice. That's a great moment, and it kind of defined part of like the tone of the show for me. I was like, because you don't usually that behavior isn't typically called out. Like, no, for it's years, celebrating. But you're still exactly, enabling that, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, another great thing on this show, I think it was episode three, we uh, we were introduced to Jasmine, uh, Gael's sister, mm -hmm. and uh, I was reading, and I thought this was really interesting, because we've had uh, uh, trans characters before on The Fosters, but Jasmine's the first uh, transgender female, mm -hmm. uh, which is really cool. And I was just wondering if you guys have a window into, like, when writing characters into the show, because the show's always been so good about inclusivity and having that vibe, do they look around and they say, who haven't we seen represented yet, and how can we represent them, or, and that's exactly that's exactly yeah. what, you know, that's the conversation that we have. That's why we wanted to have, you know, a bisexual man. Yeah. I feel like that's you never know, really That's really anymore. underrepresented, and yeah. if it is, it's not done well. Mm -hmm. um, no, I, I, so that was really important to us. Um, you know, a trans female, yeah, we're just trying to, you know, just get sure it everybody out there. Can see themselves. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Make sure everyone can watch a show and see themselves and relate. That's what it's about. What is growing up in that environment, like between the Fosters and now? It's like, what is that? Do you think that's done? I know it's hard to gauge in the moment, but like, how has that influenced your your worldview and and how you see everything, you know, outside of the cameras? Yeah, it's everything. Yeah, I I mean, we've learned so much. Um, you know, I think we were both always, you know, quite open minded, mm -hmm. um, and uh, definitely I've always been like a lefty, but. Um, just, you know, the education of it. And, right. um, you know, that's and been The writers huge. do such a beautiful job at doing their research. And so, you know, everyone that is on represented is represented so well. Yeah. And, and through the characters, through story, yeah. not just, you know, for the sake of it. Or we're going to hit this topic. Yeah, it's not just checking off a box. They're very much a part of the story. There's mm -hmm. a, there's three-dimensional characters. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on there. Yeah. yeah. The show's always been really good at that, and the show continues in that tradition. Mm -hmm. So Thank you. you. guys have a lot to be proud of. There's one last thing, uh, a couple last things before we start heading over to audience and questions and stuff that I wanted to ask. One is really fun. Uh, John M. Chu, director of Crazy Rich Asians, did your pilot, did the first episode. That must yeah, have been a lot of did. fun. Cool oh, working yeah, with John. So yeah, he's the fun. best. Yeah. Yeah, he, we were so excited to have him. Yeah. Yeah, and we so got really lucky. lucky. Yeah, yeah he, he's amazing. He really set the tone for the entire series. Yeah, he helped us create the, you know, the three worlds. So, yeah. 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 Very cool. And the last thing, this is really exciting. Uh, Sierra, I think it's, I'm going to say March 15th. Do you have some new music? Liquid I Courage? Do. Yeah, I'll hold yes. for applause. Thank you, thank you. Just you wait. It's my favorite. Can you thank tell you me so anything much. about it? What can you say? What can you say? Um, well, I mean, it's the first kind of piece of work I put out um, since I think I was 19. So I'm, I'm really excited just because, you know, I mean, I've lived a little bit of life since then. So <laughs> got a little bit to talk about. And it's a little, it's a lot different than, than everything I put out before, a lot more pop. And um, I'm really, really proud of it. I'm really excited. So March 15th, please listen. Listen, it's and excellent. And LP is, is following very soon. And the LP shortly after that as well. Oh, yes. So awesome. Thank We're going to take uh, some questions. I've got at least one from Twitter, and I think we might have, let me see. Well, they're going to tell me in a second. We're looking in the room. But we got one from Twitter. This one is from N. Froberg. N. Froberg 22. And uh, they're asking, what were some of your favorite scenes to shoot on Good Trouble? Nathan Froberg and Froberg. Okay, cool. I get it now. Good Makes job. Sense. Yeah, there we go. Okay. That, that there tracks. It is. <laughs> yeah. What do you? What's yours? I always love the coterie scenes, just because I feel like that's like the heart and soul of of the the, the what show. A cool set. Yeah, I just I feel like there's so much going on in every character's lives that like we just kind of like get back to basics together. Yeah. Yeah. I think when we came up with that concept of the coterie. I think that's when I knew we were onto something special yeah. because it allowed us to keep that tradition of like a family, family drama dinner. and that structure yeah. and bring it back to the Foster's tradition of, yeah, like family dinner and um, immediately being introduced to all these new characters with like depth and just these yeah. like glorious weirdos. Um, it is very parallel to, yeah. to the Foster's household in a way. Like as much as Callie wasn't down to, for the, like, a, like the idea of communal living, yeah. if you think about it, 
like we were so used to sharing a bathroom with yeah. a bunch of same people. Yeah. Like yeah. it is really essentially the same thing. Yeah. All of your training has led to this. Exactly. <laughs> For this very moment. Yeah. Those scenes are fun. Yeah. I think I think my favorite has been just all of the sparring I've been able to do with Roger Bart, who plays mm. uh, Judge Wilson. He's great. He's amazing. And those scenes, as challenging as they are, have been really like satisfying. Just like yeah, I love my specky there. haters. Scenes so your too. specky haters are great. <laughs> they're love so much fun because they are the sweetest guys in real life. So, so we just sweet. genuinely have so much fun. Like when they're just being so mean to me. Mariana, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I have chills. <laughs> cringy, but you know it's so fun to fight the patriarchy as well. So yeah. you know it's fun. It's been yes, perfect. girl. Mm -hmm. Um, well. Uh, apparently, I took up too much time. I had too many questions. So I I'm so we, sorry, everyone. That awesome. <laughs> That's my fault. Uh, but we're going to wrap things up. I want to I wanna thank you guys again for coming and hanging out with us. It's so cool to have you here. Uh, congratulations on this amazing show. Thank you. Uh, I want to remind everybody, the single Liquid Courage, March 15th, Empire Woo! Records. Check it out. And thank if you didn't you. know already, Good Trouble is Tuesdays. I wrote it down. That's why I'm looking down over here. Good Trouble is Tuesdays, 8, 7 Central on Freeform. Uh, one more time, please make a ridiculous amount of noise. For Maya and Sierra. Come on, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.